Remember this one? God's name? The whole 717 revelation? It's something people had talked about for a long time, including us. We were trying to discern it and to, to understand it for a long time. And when you go look up 717 in the Hebrew, it's used twice. One means to gather and one means to pluck. That's like pre-trib and mid-trib connected to 717. Do you guys remember what 717 was about? The cross. The cross. Why was Christ the middle cross? You know, we even got a picture. Somebody sent it to me a couple of years ago that it looks like seven, one, seven mirrored, right? But why would Christ be the middle one on the cross? Why wasn't he the first one? Why wouldn't he be first and be the first one in order on the cross? Right? What was the purpose of him being the middle one? Well, remember, Christ was in the beginning, the beginning, right? In Taurus, in the middle, in Taurus was the beginning. Taurus was the beginning. And the Feast of First Fruits, Christ in Taurus was in the beginning. <clears throat> All these things you know, right? All these things you know. Remember, in the beginning means what? It's the Feast of First Fruits, 7225. So God as Taurus, Christ in the beginning as First Fruits, as the Feast of First Fruits. So when he's crucified, he's in the middle between what? The one that represents paradise on Jesus' right, our left, if we're looking at it. And then the other one that represents the flesh. So what do you have? You have an image here of pre, mid, and post. Spirit, light, and flesh. Remember, Christ, he was what? The first Adam was was a soul right in the flesh and the last adam who is christ was of the spirit from heaven spirit what did he tell the guy on the cross in luke on his right he told him when he had repented that what happened he told him he would be with him in paradise why was this guy paradise why was it the guy on this side why wasn't it the guy on this side because you know what paradise represents? Where the rapture group is going. The pre-trib group goes to the third heaven. The rapture group goes to paradise. And the third group is the Lord returning feet down on the Mount of Olives, pre-mid post. What does the Feast of Weeks represent? A single day event. So out of three feasts to the Lord, like 717, the Christ is, 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 is representing the first one. Because in the beginning, he was the beginning. He was spirit, remember? What does this represent? The spirit, the son, and the father. One, seven, seven. If you read it from left to right, seven, one, seven. How can, how can we show the explanation to this? Deuteronomy 16. There are three feasts to the Lord. I remember when our brother shared this with us. I can't remember which brother it was, but I remember when it was shared. And it was just like a huge light bulb went off. And it was like, of course, why? Because there are three feasts to the Lord. There's the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. There's pre, mid, post. There's Luke, Mark, Matthew. And what do you have? Passover, which is what? You have Passover, and then you have unleavened bread, which is seven days. You have Feast of Weeks, which is what? A one day. Then you have Feast of Tabernacles, which is seven days. What are the feasts of the Lord? Seven, one, seven. Hello. But how is it going to play out? Well, it's kind of like the like the comma or or the uh, uh, um. What's that one? Uh, is that the yod or is this the yod? I can't recall now. Okay, it looks like seven and then comma one seven. Because it's going to begin one, seven, seven. Because the beginning is Taurus. The beginning is Feast of Weeks. Feast of Weeks is always in Taurus in the month of Savan. Taurus is the beginning. 
it's just, it goes back to even to our story where a lot of this began to be revealed in, in uh, Genesis 29, right? What's the story of, of Jacob with his wives? He worked seven years, got one, then had a wedding, right? Then had a seven day wedding. Then he had to work seven more years before he can officially get the uh, Rachel, who was the younger, Leah was the older. And then he worked six more years for the cattle. And at the end of those 20 years, he made a covenant with his father-in-law. And what's the picture of that? It's like this, at the end of the 20th year in the big picture, which is the same as saying at the end of the 13th year of seals and trumpets, what happens at the end? The Lord returns to fulfill the final year. And what does he start with doing? He confirms the covenant that he made at the beginning, at the end of seals to the beginning of trumpets that he made with all nations. You see? It's the story that we 